Come here, right for you. We got the guys in the building, got guys in the building. We do not care about your feelings. We do not care about your feelings. What's your name, brother? We got the guys in the building. What is it? Brother Dylan, you believe in God? You don't believe in God. Why not, brother? You here to listen? Okay, now listen to this. Okay, so you don't believe in God. Why not? It's, you say what? It sounds like a fairy tale. It's a, it's a cult. I don't really put myself in cult. But I'm open to hearing what you have to say. Okay, so your name's Dylan, right? Dylan says that the Bible is a fairy tale. Okay, okay. So what makes it a fairy tale? What do you think? Hold on. There's a giant dragon and all sorts of magical creatures. I mean, come right out of a fairy tale. Let's be honest with myself. Right? Oh, now, what's another issue that you have, brother? Go ahead. Oh, the what? The cult? Okay. I mean, like the whole religious stuff. I mean, I don't, it doesn't bother me. But when you start telling people this is how they should dress, this is religious, this is what they should do, they should just make different fabrics and all sorts of, to me, nonsense. It just kind of gets out of hand. I mean, okay, okay, I got you. Now, so, so watch this. I want you to, um, you seem like a very intellectual person. They're animals. So now, the brother said, where's the God that fixed everything? So now, to understand that, you must read the Bible. You must read the Bible. Now, we got the guys in the building. We got the guys in the building. Got guys in the building. We do not care about your feelings. We do not care about your feelings. Got guys in the building. We got the guys in the building. We got the guys in the building. Got guys in the building. We do not care about your feelings. We do not care about your feelings. Don't care about you. What's good? Read it from the top again. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, uh -huh. and he that formed thee, O Israel, uh -huh. fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Uh -huh. I have called thee by thy name. Uh -huh. Thou art mine. We are God's brother. Yeah. We belong to the Heavenly Father. That's what we have to put in our brains, brother. Every First Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. Now, Dylan, how old are you, Dylan? You're 20 years old. You in school? No. no? Never went to college? Oh, you dropped out. Okay, so you don't believe in God. Why not? It just kind of seems like a fairy tale. It's, you say what? It sounds like a fairy tale. It's, um, it's a cult. I don't really put myself in cults, but I'm open to hearing what you got to say. Okay, so your name Dylan, right? Dylan says that the Bible is a fairy tale. Okay, okay. So what makes it a fairy tale? What do you think? Um, there's a giant dragon. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What? There's a giant dragon and all sorts of magical creatures that, I mean, come right out of a fairy tale. Let's be honest with myself, right? Give me Hosea real quick. I'm going to explain that right there. I'm going to explain everything, the reason why you don't believe in the Bible. We're going to go direct to the point. So the brother said that it's dragons and... Giants, nothing. Giants, okay. Oh. Angels and demons. Angels and demons, okay. Hosea 10 and 12, or 12. The book of Hosea, chapter 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by prophet. So the prophets, Isaiah, all the uh, brothers in the Old Testament, the prophets. He's spoken by prophet, God. And I have multiplied visions. He multiplied visions. God will show the prophet visions to show them the prophecy that's going to happen. Read. And used similitude. So do you know what a similitude is? Okay, similitude is when you compare something to another. Like when you read in, Deuter in Revelation, it says the dragon. He actually compared that dragon to something. You understand what I'm telling you? So watch this. Give me Job chapter 30, verse 30, verse 29. Bring it up. 
Now watch, this what the dragon was a similar to. It was compared to something. Go ahead. The book of Job, chapter 30 and verse 29. I am a brother to dragons. So this is Job. He was a man. He was a prophet. He said that I am a brother to dragons. Meaning what? Wicked men. Wicked men. So when you read in Revelations, it said dragon. It wasn't talking about a literal dragon. It was talking about wicked men. So why do I have to pick out what is a metaphor and what is not a metaphor? Because then that's the, I mean, the whole thing could be subjective at that point, right? Okay, so now, in order to understand that, you must understand the Bible. Are you familiar with history? I'm familiar with history. Okay, at the time when Jesus Christ walked the earth, what people was ruling in that time? I'm not sure. Okay, give me John 11, verse 47. Here's the people who was ruling at the time of Christ. What people are ruling today? Um, white. white people, right? So I'm going to ask you a question. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 11 and verse 47. Then, great, then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doth many miracles. He's talking about Jesus. He done mir many miracles. Read. If we let him thus, if we don't deal with him wisely, read, all men will believe on him. Uh -huh. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. It says that the Romans will come and take away his place and that nation, meaning the Romans was ruling at this time. Right. You understand what I'm telling you? So at this time, the Romans was ruling, right? So now, the prophets, give me Daniel, where it says they always prophesied of many, great many kingdoms. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. So with the apostles and the apostles and the prophets, they will prophesy against many countries, many nations. Read. And against great kingdoms. And a great kingdom against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophets which prophesied of peace when the when the word of the prophet shall come to pass then shall the prophet be known that the lord hath truly sent him so now they will prophesy against many kingdoms like during the time of rome what the apostles did was what they will preach against the kingdom of rome because they had their people in slavery you want to you follow me right now so now at that time what do you call when you're preaching against a country it's called treason. Treason. So at this time, guess what? They could not preach because Rome had laws that said if you was to preach against them, you was commit. You had to. You had to be put to death. You understand? So they had to find a way to save the uh, to, te uh, to teach God's words, but they will use similar tools that their people can't understand. You understand what I'm telling you? So when you read in Revelation about a, a dragon, that was a particular race. What race? The Romans. The Romans. Because if they would have said, hey, all the Romans are going to die and they was going around preaching the word like we are, guess what would have happened to them? <laughs> Necks cut off. Bring it up. Bring it up. You understand? And, Re and John the Revelator, on, he was on the island of Patmos. They killed all the prophets. Why did they kill him? Why did they kill Jesus? Jesus died because he could, they said he committed treason. They said that he was king of the Jews. And at that time, Caesar was ruling. So that's what they got Jesus on. They killed him for. So you understand, you understand that issue. So when it's talking about dragons and bears and oh my, it's talking as a similar to. It's comparing one thing to another. You understand what I'm telling you? Okay. So go back. So now what's another issue that you have, brother? Um, you know what? Like, hey, go ahead. This, the, the coat of Jesus and all the... The what? The coat of Jesus. The coat? The coat. Okay. I mean, like the whole religious stuff. I mean, I don't... It doesn't bother me, but when you start telling people this is how they should dress, this is who they should sleep with, this is what they should do, they shouldn't mix different fabrics and all sorts of, to me, nonsense, it just kind of gets out of hand. I'm okay, okay, I got you. Now, so, so watch this. I want you to, uh, you seem like a very intellectual person. So now, when the earth was created, right, look at the earth. Look at the earth, look at the sun, look at the moon. Give me Ecclesiastes. Matter of fact, jump to Romans chapter 1, verse 27. Romans chapter 1, is that Romans or Corinthians? Okay. Romans 1, 21. The book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world. So it says, from the visible things of him, meaning the creation of God from the creation of the world. 
read, are clearly seen. It said it's clearly seen that there's a God just when you look at the creation. Right. Like the sun, the moon, the stars, the ocean, the land. Right. It said you can look at the creation and then that's proof that there's a God. Right. Go ahead. Right. Being understood by the things that are made. So being understood by the things that are made. Okay, so now watch this. I want to give you a hint about that. Look at the sun really quick. Look at the moon really quick. Now, I want you to take a look at the stop signs. I want you to take a look at the stoplights. What is the purpose of that, uh, what do you call that, the light? The stoplight, what's the purpose of it? To tell people when they can and cannot go. To what? To tell people when they can and cannot go. So it has a purpose, right? And it has a job, and it does the same thing over and over according to the creator, right? So now, give me Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse one. So God wants us to look at the creation, and he says, by looking at the creation, it's proof that I exist, that God exists. Right. So now, let's examine the creation like we just examined that light. That's created by man, right? right. And, and, and it's proof that it was created by a man because of the purpose, what it does. You understand what I'm saying? So watch this, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 2. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Uh -huh. What profit hath a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? So it says, what profit a man of his labor, meaning his works, what he does, under the sun, meaning everything that's on earth. That's Read. Right. One generation passes away. So it says, one generation pass it away. Dealing with the generations, gen generation of men. Go ahead. One generation passes away. Uh -huh and another generation coming. So it says one generation passes away and another generation coming. Right. Dealing with cycles, cycles of creation. Now watch this. But the earth abideth forever. Then it says the earth will always abide forever. That's what the Bible says. Go ahead. The sun also riseth and the sun goeth down. So it says the sun riseth and the sun goeth down. Read. And hasted to his place where he arose. And then it returned back to the place where it arose. Like clockwork. Does it ever do something different? It do exactly like that stoplight. Do the stoplight just go off? No, it goes through the same function every time according to creation. Like the sun, the, moon, the sun does. It does the same thing over and over and it has a purpose. You understand that? It has a purpose. Read. The wind goeth toward the south. So now it's talking about the different circuits of the wind. You understand that? Go ahead. And turneth about unto the north. Uh -huh. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuit. According to his circuit, according to his purpose. Like the car. You, you make the, uh, they created the car, right? The car, you put the key in the car, you start the car up, the car moves. You, you uh, turn the key, put it in the park, it don't move. And does not do, it does exactly what it was meant for. You understand what I'm telling you? Read. All the rivers run into the sea. So now we're looking at the creation of the rivers and the seas. It says the river runs into the sea. Read. Yet the sea is not full. Yet the sea is not full. You ever wonder why that is? Yep. Read. Yep. Unto the place from which the rivers came, uh -huh. thither they return again. Uh -huh. I really want you to take this serious right now. Take it serious, brother. Don't laugh. Read. All things are full of labor. So it says all things are full of labor. Everything has is doing something. Everything has a purpose according to what God created it to do. That's right. All things. Everything that was created on the earth, it has a purpose. That's right. It was created for a reason. You understand what I'm telling you? Go ahead. Man cannot utter it. So the man... And I'm going to go point to the white man because he the ones who give us these philosophies. Right, right. He give us these uh, the science, theory. right. these theories. It says, read it again. Man cannot utter it. It says, man don't understand the creation or all the creation, how God has created it for. Like you. And just because that we don't understand it, we'll say, well, God doesn't exist. That's what white people do. That's what the sciences do today. Because right, right. they the science, brother. We know that. You understand that? So they the ones who say once they can't understand it, they'll say, you know what? There's no God. And they'll come up with their own understanding because they don't understand. Read apart again. All things are full of labor. So all things are full of labor. Everything that God on the earth, it has a purpose. It's doing something. 
it has a purpose. And God says in Romans, he said, you can look at the person, look at the uh, purpose, the creation of all the sun, the moon, the earth, the water, the wind, and you will see its purpose. You understand? You will see what it was designed for. You understand? Read. Man cannot utter it. It says man don't understand this. And that's the reason why people like you are um, atheists, uh, uh, the, the, uh, Scientology and all that stuff like that. Because they don't understand how God made the how, how God made the world. Read on. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. So the eyes today, men, we're not satisfying seeing. That's just proof or not. No, we want to be next to God. We want to get to Him. We want to understand Him. You understand? So watch this. Give me First Timothy chapter six, verse twenty. Now watch this. The book of First Timothy. Chapter 6 and verse 20. O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. It says, keep that which is committed to your trust. The Bible read, avoiding profane and vain babbling. It says, avoiding profane and vain babblings, meaning lies, That's just right. babbling. Right. Now, let's see what it called profane and vain babbling. What's your name, brother? Jamal. Jamal. Listen, Jamal. And oppositions of science. You hear what it says? In opposition of science. Right. That's what God calls profane and vain babbling. In opposition of science, falsely so called. And falsely so called. Because science definition of science is knowledge. Right. And that's not really knowledge, just as a man's understanding what he thinks. Like theory. Theory is what is the definition of literary theory? It's an idea. It's an opinion. That's all it is. You understand what I'm saying? So it's actually enough evidence today that says there is a God, then there's not. That's right. But what they do is they deceive. And they deceive who? The black man, the Hispanic man. That's right. Because their nationality and their purpose, which God created them for, they're not doing it today. So now the brother, you said, now why is it important that you men wear uh, pants, women wear dress? It's quite simple. Everything has a purpose. Everything was created for a purpose. The clothing on your body was created for a purpose. You was created for a person. Individual races was created for a person. A man and a woman was created for a person, a purpose. And God is the creator. You understand what I'm telling you? You understand? So what? What's up? The entrance. God created that entrance for a purpose. The what? The entrance. Uh huh? Entrance for a purpose. What's, what do you mean? Like, like, give me the weed, uh, marijuana. You smoke marijuana? I do. Now, give me, give it to me. Now, let's go, go to I some. Do. The purpose of it. Now, let's see the purpose of weed. Everything has a. It's listen, brother. I need you to be quiet. Pay attention. What's your name? Jamal. Jamal. Now, watch this. Now, marijuana plants. They have a purpose, right? And when you look at these purposes, it's easy to tell. They're made to heal. They're made to heal diseases. You understand? So, watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 104 and verse 14. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle. So God causes the grass to grow for the cattle. Meaning its purpose for the grass is for the cattle to eat. Right. Read. And herb for the service of man. And herbs for the service of man. To heal them, to get their skin right, to moisturize them. You understand what I'm saying? He made that to serve for men. Read. That he may bring forth food out of the earth. That he may bring forth food. So that's what it's created for. To survive, to eat, to nourish your body. But our people today, they will take that marijuana, they will light it up and smoke it. You understand what I'm saying? And what does it do when you do that? And what happens when you, when you smoke marijuana? You first Peter. Uh, it depends on the brother said it depends on the individual. That's what the brother said. So now let's go. First Peter chapter 2 verse 13. The book of First Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. So God says to gird up your loins of your mind. Meaning what? Get your mind right. Read. And be sober. God says to be sober. Now when you smoking marijuana, there are you smart. Are you sober or are you high? You're high. So you're not in your right mind state, right? So read it again. There, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. It says be sober. Be sober. Get your mind right. God is talking to the black race, the Hispanic race. He's talking to them because their mind, guess what? They're not sober. 
from what they've been learned, whether, whether you are atheist, whether you are Christian, the, the incorrect teaching of God and all its purpose of the creation have been taught wrong today. You, you understand? 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. Now what happened if, I'm, I'm going to let you speak. Now what happened if you take that plant and use it for its purpose, it will help you. But once you take that, that, that plant and don't use it for its purpose, use it for the wrong reason, it destroys your mind. It destroys your mind. You understand that? 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. It says, know ye not that, that you are the temple of God. Read. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. So that the spirit of God, it dwells in his people. Read. If any man defile the temple of God. So now if any man go and defile the temple of God. Read. Him shall God destroy. It says God will kill you once you begin to defile your temple. Now, there's many ways you can defile your temple. Give me Leviticus chapter 11. Start at verse 41, 47. 47 or what? 47, 46. Come on. Leviticus, now we're going to go through some more creation. Because your creation is proof that God is this. So now watch. The different how humans, how we associate or how we use God's creation, is can be used for a benefit or it can be used to our detriment. You understand what I'm telling you? But God, the Bible is the manual. Yes, it is the manual to living on earth. But the people today don't follow it. Go ahead. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 46. This is the law of the beast. So now God is going to give you more laws. He created all the animals and then he said, now this is the law of the beast. Like you got the law of gravity. That's right. A white man said that. <laughs> and that's not entirely true either. That's just what he can understand. I'm not saying there's not gravity, but I'm saying the understanding of it, that came from a man. That's what I'm telling you. You understand? So watch this. Read it again. This is the law of the beast. This is the law of the beast that God created. So he created all the animals. And he said, here's the law on how to operate and deal with these beasts. Read. And of the fowls. And of the fowls, the birds. And of every living creature that moveth in the waters. And of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. So now, does, now, let's, now you smart. Now, does this even sound like it's coming from a man? Can a man think like this? Really think about it. Just look, do men talk like this? No. Men don't talk like this. What men you, that walk the earth today that thinks like this? Remember, in Ecclesiastes, it says, Surely men are vain by nature. Meaning what? They want to war. They want to have sex. They want to do all the evil stuff. That's how men is. All of them. You understand? All of them. You understand? So what person thinks like this? Read it again. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the water. So now throughout history, the Greeks, have they ever came up with a law of the beast? White people, do they come up with a law that? No. This is God talking. Only a God can think like this. Only a God can talk like this. Read. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. So he wanted to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. Now the unclean and the clean, it has its purpose. But this is talking about eating consumption for humans. For God's people. The black man, the black man, and Hispanic man. Go ahead. And between the beast that may be eaten uh -huh. and the beast that may not be eaten. So now, so now, so now, jump back to Romans real quick. One, and we're going to jump right back. Romans chapter 1. I don't want you to lose the point. Now remember it says by the creation. It's proof through God creation that there is a God. Through the creation. So now we're going through the creation of beasts. And a beast to eat and a beast not to eat. You understand what I'm saying? So jump back. You understand? You understand? Jump back. Now jump up to verse 7. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine. Now it's going to the pig. He's dealing with the pig. Read. Though he be hoof, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, uh -huh. yet he cheweth not the cud. It says, yet he, yet he cheweth not the cud. Read. He is unclean to you. It says, he is unclean to you, meaning don't eat it. So now, do you know what means when you chew at the cud? You know what that means? Well, certain animals, they have two stomachs and they oh. regurgitate it up to the other stomach and then they eat it again. So they clean, what they eat with the food, they eat it. They digest it better and they clean. So it's more healthier. You understand what I'm saying? 
But all animals don't do this. So now, in order to understand that law, why does God say not to eat it? All you got to do is examine the creation. Examine pig. Pig are the most toxic animals in the world. You know what pigs eat? They, pigs eat the garbage of the earth. They're the scavenger. Their purpose is to eat everything that dies. They eat humans. You understand what I'm saying? You get, a pig could get stung by a, 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 a poisonous snake. It will not affect the pig. Because the pig is so full of toxin. They don't have sweat glands. They don't even sweat. They, they keep all that toxin in their body. So when you examine that creation, and then you say, oh, God said this thousands of years ago. Now, how did they understand this thousands of years ago? Because people got sick when they ate pigs, and then they wrote it down in the book. Okay, okay. That's what you said. So now, so now, that's the what? That's the most logical standpoint. Okay, so now, it's the most logical standpoint. But surely, remember what the scripture says, surely are men vain by nature. Now, today, we have science today, right? right now, back in the day, did they have less science or less knowledge or more today? Bring it out. More today. So they didn't understand diseases. They didn't even understand animals. Right. Before God wrote this in the Bible, they all ate what they wanted to eat. The only people who followed these laws was the Israelites. Yes, right. One race. All the other races, they never followed this. Right. Ever. Ever. You understand what I'm saying? So now, who can understand something like this? Who can understand that the cow chewed the cud, meaning they got two stomachs? Way before, they can understand these things. You understand what I'm saying? History and history and science and knowledge improved over centuries. But back then, people was vain and dumb. They all had war over women. You understand what I'm telling you? Right. That's why it says, surely men are vain by nature. Nah. Men don't think right. like this. Men don't set laws like this. Right. Men don't understand things like this. Right. So now jump back. 11 and 7. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. So now you have to examine all the animals who are cold and footed and they divide the hood. So when you look at those animals, they are clean. They're more healthy to eat. You think it's just a coincidence that men at this time that look at the animals, all the ones that divide the hood, we're going to eat that? No, only a creator can say something like that. Only a creator can know if this divides the hood and they be cold and footed, then you can eat it. Only a creator, a God, can, that's what I'm, I'm really trying to get you to do is think, brother. I, no, I'm, thinking, I'm really trying to I get you to do is think. I just don't buy, but my question, I, my question, you understand that? Let's read on and I'm going to let you talk. Okay. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, uh -huh. and their carcass shall ye not touch. Uh -huh. They are unclean to you. So now, they are unclean to you. And now this is up to today, 2019. Do they still eat pork? Yes. Do they promote pork on TV? Is pork the most promoted uh, meat on earth? They say it's the new white meat? Yes. And this is with more understanding. So imagine back then. You think somebody can understand that? No. No. Even to today, men are what? Surely vain by nature. Because they even know, they even have signs now that says it, but they still do it. So imagine back then, only a God can talk like this. You understand what I'm saying? Now I really want you to listen. I really want read on. Verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. So it says, these shall you eat the, all that are in the waters. All that is in the water. Who talks like this? <laughs> read on. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So it says, them shall ye eat. Everything that has fins and scales. Because the scales has a purpose, it cleans the meat. Now when you look at the shrimp, lobster, all that stuff that swims at the bottom of the earth, at the bottom of the earth there's an ecosystem in the ocean. Right. It has a purpose. They eat the poop of the earth, just like the pig the, at the ocean, and the pig eat the, uh, the garbage of the earth. Everything has a purpose. But was it meant for its purpose to eat? No, it was never meant for that. Puffer fish has fins and gills or whatever you want to call it, and if you eat that, you might die if you don't know where the poison is of it. So you said now, now listen, and I want to give you another thing because science today. I was watching a uh, thing that where they said, well, they have fins and scales. No, they don't. A lot of things. A lot. Listen, and this is what it is. That's why the Bible says, "Give me Sirach chapter ten, verse twelve, real quick," and then we're going to jump because what we do, right? We 
we go through this Bible, the Bible makes plain sense. You understand that? And when you look at the humans today, human race today, they make no sense. Look at, look, think about it. We got all this technology, we got all the food, but why is this poor people? We got all this technology, why are there people bums on the street? It's we, huh? It's because men are vain by nature. So then the God They're animals. So now, the brother said, where's the God that fixed everything? So now, to understand that, you must read the Bible. You must read the Bible. Now watch, I want you to stay with me and try to hear me out. Because if you, your spirit, you're not really hearing it right now. No, now watch this, be quiet, be quiet. First Corinthians, matter of fact, so rock 10 and 12 real quick. Because your concept of God, you got a concept of God in your mind. But what the Bible is talking about and your concept, which in your mind is completely different. Right. And if you actually take the time to hear your brother out, your black brother, your Israelite brother, you will learn something today. Right. So watch this, brother. The book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 10. Bring it up. Never trust thine enemy. So now the Bible says to never trust your enemies. Now, who are your enemies? Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Now we're going to, it says, never trust your enemy. That's what the Bible says. God says this. So, go ahead. The, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. God says you're going to bring the Israelites back into bondage. This is a prophecy. Back into slavery, but this time on slave ships. Read. By the way whereof. By the way whereof, thou shalt see it no more again. It says, thou shalt see it no more again, your homeland. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there. It says, in there, once you get, get to this country, read, off the slave ships, read. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So it says, once you get off the slave ships and this destination, you will be sold unto your enemies. Now, does this history happen to black people? It happened to black. Now, this is a prophecy of it happening to black people. Bring it, up. it was written thousands of years ago. So God says the people who will put you on slave ships are your enemies. So now, watch this, brother. Your concept of God and the Bible concept of God is completely different. Right, Give me Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. So now watch this. Here's where you learn what you think about God. And I see why you feel this way. Because how you feel and what the Bible said is completely different. But once we read the Bible to you, it should change your mind. Read. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Read it Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So now, these are the Israelites in the Colossians. He said, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit. At this time, who was the philosophy? Who was the king at that time? Romans. They was ruling at that time. What's the first king of Rome? Caesar. They was ruling at this time. You understand what I'm saying? So read it again. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So it means somebody going to corrupt you through philosophies, theories, just vain lies, what a man made up. Read. After the tradition of men. It says after the tradition of men. Read. After the rudiments of the world. Uh -huh. And not after Christ. And not after Christ. So now, somebody came here and taught you that philosophy, that way of thinking, that theory. You understand what I'm saying? So now, God, watch this. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 39. Let's see if we can change the concept of God. The Bible is going to change the concept for you. Watch this. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 39. Bring it up. All flesh is not the same flesh. So now it's dealing with creation again. He says all flesh is not the same flesh. It's different. Rust is. But there is one kind of flesh of men. So you got one flesh of men. Read. Another flesh of beasts. Another flesh of beasts. So God created men and beasts. They're different flesh. Read. Another of fishes and another of birds. Now watch this. Pay attention. There are also celestial bodies. Read it again. There are also celestial bodies. He said there are also celestial bodies. Celestial. Meaning what? No. Read it again. There are also celestial bodies. Aliens out of space. You understand what I'm telling you? Read on. And bodies terrestrial. And bodies terrestrial, meaning live on earth. So God, he has a body. So now I want to ask you a question. 
You understand now? It says they're so-called aliens or selectual beings. You understand what I'm saying? So now, what type of body would you think God would have? A selectual or a terrestrial? Selectual. Yes, they're all aliens. They're in the Bible. Now watch this. Now watch this. Now, is it making a little bit more sense? When it says God, a creator, he, he literally has a body. He literally, he literally lives somewhere. He literally has vehicles. So read that part again. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Okay, you, you understand that? So watch this. Let's jump to how they look now. Ezekiel. Chapter 1, verse 3. So this is what you don't listen. The Bible has everything in it. You understand what I'm saying? So when you see UFOs, all this, some of it are lies, some of it is true. The Bible tells you everything. You right. understand what I'm telling you? It's just your concept of God and what, what God is, really is, is that you've been taught by the white man. Right. The Bible is going to teach you the correct way. Yes. Yes. And then it'll make sense. It'll right. make sense. It will make more sense. It might not, but you can take this. You can read all you want from the Bible. Okay. Well, if you don't want me to go on, brother, because, you know, I feel like you're a little bit ungrateful right now. You need to listen, brother. I've been, I've had these talks before. Uh-huh. I understand that I've talked to many, many people about this. But when you talk, like, my main question, my main question was when you're telling people what not to do, what does that matter when you're serving God? That's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. When I, I, listen, 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 listen. That's just like you. That's just like you. Um, that's like you. Uh, getting a car that you bought or you created and then the car tell you what it's going to do okay. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. You understand? It makes no sense at all. Give me Romans chapter 9 and start at verse 14 And start at verse 14 because we're going to go in like little factual stuff things you can touch You're going to be able to see but watch this. Man. Listen, listen, listen. You understand the concept what I'm saying Right. And I'm dealing patient with you. It's, Think about that. That's like you getting in your car and your car telling you what it want to do. Right. It has a purpose. That's what I'm trying to say. Most people won't humble themselves due to the teaching. Black people have been robbed from their history, their nationality, everything that they know. That's right. Sure, yo. Everything. Exactly. You understand? And everything exactly. that they've been taught is by the white man. Right. Facts, like the brother said. Facts. So just know when a black man come up here, when a Hispanic man come up here, they're not coming up with their history, their knowledge. They're coming here with everything the oppressor, their enemy says. Bro, bring it up. And that's just facts. Brother, what's up? He's good, he's good, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. The brother good. What's up, brother? Why are we speaking English? Huh? Because the white man told us that language. He, he, uh, hear me out. What you say, brother? We are speaking a language that's foreign to our nature. Okay. Listen, brother, listen. But you understand what I'm saying. Romans chapter 39, verse 14. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 14. What shall we say then? It says, what shall we say then? Read. Is there unrighteousness with God? So now, some people might say that because due to God's creation and the purpose of his creation and what God tells us to do and not to do, we'll say that's unrighteous with God. Why would a God have uh, create us to serve? We got to do like, we got to dress a certain way. We'll say that. When we are the creation, go ahead. That's like that's like your car getting it. You getting it in the car. You tell her, oh, no, nah, you gonna go here. But there's a difference within that. What's the difference? The difference is you can't give somebody free will and then get mad that they don't do what you told them to do. That's, okay. That's, that's, that's okay. 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 Read on. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Huh? God forbid. Huh? For he saith to Moses. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. He said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Uh -huh. yeah. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Verse 20. Listen, listen. Nay, but O oh man, who art thou that replieth against God? So he's dealing with the men, not just any man, the black man today. He said, who are you to apply against God? Most people, our people, when they apply against God, they're not applying at their own will. They're applying by the men who actually taught them. You have to understand that a race of people taught us everything we know. Bring it up. They taught us who we are. They taught us about uh, where we come from. They taught us what's wrong, what's right. right. They taught us lies. You understand that? They taught us religion. They call us Christianity. They taught us to hate each other. They turn us to animals. Bring it up. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. So first you have to understand that and you looking at me, you just looking at me, that's just history. And you seem like a very intelligent man. But guess what? The philosophy of this world, it confuses us and it destroys our minds. Right. From the scientists of the black man to the, to the uh, politicians of the black man, all the way down to the gangbanger, we are destroyed. Right. We are destroyed. Right. Read. Nay, but oh man, who are thou that replies against God? So who are you to reply against God? You are the creation. And, 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 this, is what, and this is what history has always been. The creation, many men have never ever wanted to do what God tells them to do. Right. They will never do it, even from the time of the flood. Now you can look at history. Every history, now listen, you're laughing again. You're laughing, but you know what? You're laughing because the knowledge that you was taught. Because listen, as a baby, do you know anything? Do you know wrong from right? You must yeah. be taught right. So you are a product of your environment, right? Now the environment that the, the black man grows up is in the environment of the people who hate him. His environment is a controlled environment. Right. The ghettos is a controlled environment. Bring it up. The schools is a controlled environment. Right. From the time we come in our mother to the time we leave the earth, it right. has been a controlled environment. Right. We don't even get to control what medicine goes in us. Right. They kill us with, with shots. Soon as we come out the bed, soon as we right. come out. And they right. circumcise you because of this book. You understand what I'm saying? But you understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. You understand what I'm saying? So now watch this, read on. Nay, but oh man, who are thou that replies against God? Uh -huh. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? That's like your car. The man created the car. Now the car gonna tell him what to do. But see, Read. Why hast thou made me thus? Has not the potter power over the clay? Now, have not the potter power over the clay? You been the clay, God been the potter. Read. Of the same lump to make the vessel unto honor. Uh -huh. And another unto dishonor. Give me Sirach chapter 15. Start at verse 13. Now listen. He did give you free will to do what you want to do. So now. You can do what you want to do. You can either keep God's commandments. Or not keep God's commandments. That's right. right. But he gave you. He gave judgment. Just like if you go out and sleep with every. Listen. If you go. Give me Deuteronomy 28 verse 61. If you go out and sleep with every woman on the street. You are at high risk of catching an STD. That's, right. That's a judgment. That's right. God says, yes, brother, that is a judgment. Watch. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 61. Uh -huh. Bring it also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. Like AIDS. You understand? Like all the STDs, committee, all that. All the diseases not written in the Bible. Read. Them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Until thou be destroyed. Because God gave us sexual laws. How to have sex. Who to have sex with. What not to do and what to do. But guess what? We did not do that. Up, we didn't abide by the laws of God. We didn't abide by the laws of a beast. We didn't abide by the sexual laws. But we didn't abide by these things. And guess what? Judgment come up into play. You might call it karma. But it's God. God created everything for a reason. Uh, you know, and, and guess what? It's very hard to accept it because what we was taught today. It's very hard to accept it. And you might not never accept it. This ain't for everybody. It ain't for everybody. But guess what? When you look in the world today, war is coming. War is coming. Death is coming. And you know what? When a person said there's no God, you know what you're saying? When you said there's no God? And we're going to go in the Bible show you what it looks like. Show you how he's going to get here. You understand? We're going to show you all that. But when you say there's no God, you know what you're saying? The white man is your God. Right. That's, that's really what you, brother, that's really what you're saying. That's really what you're saying. You understand that? That's what you're saying. You mean, guess what? There's no way out for black people. There's no way out for Hispanic people. Because throughout history, throughout history, brother, listen. Throughout history, have we ever got a fair shake since we've been in America? No. Now, guess what? When you say things like there's no God, you know what you're saying to black people? First you're saying that the white man is your God. Then you're saying it's no hope because they got all the wars, the weapon of war, they got the nuclear bombs. We have no power to fight. We have no might. We have nothing. So what you're saying that black people, Hispanic people are gonna stay in hell. And you know what? That's a lie, brother. So now give me what it says a fool has said that in his mind with his son, 51, 51, 14.
Now let's see what God says about the man, the black man that don't believe in God, that don't believe in common sense. The book of Psalms, chapter 14, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. It says, a fool has said in his heart, there is no God. A fool has said in his mind that there is no God. Because you can just open your eyes and see. Somebody created this. It's common sense. Man created the earth. Just to read it again. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. No, brother, you a fool, brother. But hopefully you won't stay a fool forever. Read. They are corrupt. They said what? They are corrupt. And God says usually when a fool said he, there's no God, usually they are corrupt. They are evil. They are evil. That's what God says. That's why they say there's no God. Because usually they are evil. Whether they want to be a girl. Whether they want to wear dresses. Whether they like to commit adultery. Murder. Usually they are evil. Some type of evil. We'll read it again. Find me the other precept. It's in Psalm 50. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. So God says that they have done abominable works. Disgusting, filthy works. You understand that? And that's what God says. So guess what? This is not for everybody. Give me Amos chapter 9 verse 9. So again, he, he did give you free will. He gave you free will to keep God's commandments or don't keep God's commandments. But there's judgment that comes with it. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.